Hi folks, well it's Saturday, I managed to get some stuff done on that uh, rocket stove or rocket oven sort of thing. I've done the burn chamber, it's there behind me. <laughs> I've just done a few clips on me putting it together. I mean, obviously if you want to watch that you can. If you skip to end you'll see end result anyway. That there. <laughs> the mix I've used and all that sort of thing. Um, as I can make some noise, then I've got some other bits I want to be doing. Uh, I've got a hammer and an axe that I need to refurb. This is axe. It's bush roomed. It's old. It's hand, hand forged. It's got a mark on it, but I can't read it. That one says 606, but I've got, I ain't got a clue what that is. And I've got a hammerhead as well, which I'm going to do first. Now, the reason I'm doing this is, well, I wanted to put new handles on, the, on this for a start. It's too short. It's not balanced. But the hammer, I broke the handle and I've had it off and I've had the, the, the head off it. So, and I saw Bruce Pender polish some axes on his channel, so check that out, it's really cool. Like mirror finished axe heads. So I'm going to mirror finish the um, the hammer, but it needs to make noise, so that'll be, uh, I'm going to do that when this is downloaded. But I'm not going to show you that. If you want to look at that, some great mirror, mirror polishing, uh, go and look at Bruce's stuff. But anyway, what's going on with this? A couple of changes, what I've done on design for cassette, and uh, but I'll put them right at the beginning of the video so then you don't have to watch all the, the build if you don't want to. Right, thanks a lot anyway. Nice to be nice. <coughs> I hope you can see this. I've, I've slightly changed design and now I'm thinking of doing it as well. That's what I've just, that's the section that I've just moulded. I'm still thinking about secondary area and I'm also, also thinking about secondary area on front. I've just expanded it a bit. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some prices this week for I'll do a proper drawing so I can get some prices from some steel places there's a place here but I'm going to do this in 3mm steel and I was going to weld a cassette up which that would be 5cm there and the cassette would be on top that would be this U profile now what I'll do what I'm thinking of doing is doing U profile welding it here and then putting the uh, ceiling um, cloth or whatever it is, the ceiling rope under and over to keep that and that independent and what I'd do is screw it down, bolt it down put oversized holes in this and this and bolt it to this with a washer over it just so that these can expand and contract at different rates when they need to and if it's all bolted then I could take this piece off if I need to because even at 3mm I think it's going to be a bit, well here it could sag and deform, I'm sure it will. So I might, just say again like I said, I was thinking about putting an opening above that as like so I can put a pot in for open, to cook on. But also with a cover so that as a, as a, as a, as a steel grill. Uh, like I was saying about secondary air, I was thinking again, I'd put some secondary air in here, I don't know how it'll work or if it'll work but it'll be easier to put it in first and then then try again later so if I put it in and it don't work I can just shut the holes because there's obviously going to be air coming in through the front of the firebox here other problem I've got or potential problem is what I'm going to do this floor with between the firebox and the oven so it might be a third piece of steel I'm going to have to get some angle iron to build some sort of frame foot doors because I'm going to have to have a door here of a burner air in that here obviously, door of a burner, door, door for oven so I've still got a few things to think about but something I, did, I have been thinking about is the area in front of barbecue where grill is I'm going to lay some um, slabs, hexagonal slabs, I've got some hexagonal slabs which were donated my neighbour had part of the drive pulled up and changed so they had some slabs over so I'm going to, I'll probably put a, an area here and dig it out and if I dig that out I might have got quite a lot of clay and if I've got like quite a lot of clay then I'll line inside like a cob oven with cob I don't know how well that'll work in fire chamber but I think I should think it'll be alright but as I said this floor's the only thing that's sort of getting stopping me at minute I've got to think about it but as I say that's where I am I'm happy with this design I'm more happy with that than doing welded cassette less work and easier to change parts out if I need to and that's my sort of reckoning on that 
Well, I managed to get some bits of stuff together to do this uh, burn chamber for the rocket oven. And uh, this here is a, this is about 11 centimetre pipe. It's about four inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a box and uh, basically do it with vermiculite and um, sand and cement mix and that will form a burn chamber that will go into inside of the uh, of the of the barbecue the old barbecue now it's extremely cold outside we're expecting extremely cold weather next week so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this together in here in garage and then take it down into the uh, old man cave and hopefully it'll cure i won't be doing much outside on the rest of the build but i've got some other thoughts about that which i'll go through later I just thought I'd show you how I'm going to cut this up. I mean, I know a lot of you guys probably know this, but all I'm well, I'm going to rip this for quickness and ease. I'm going to rip it down with a jigsaw, but all I've done is put myself a guide using my water level and or spirit level. Only th what I do is measure you're measuring from your, your saw blade to your edge, and that'll just use it as a guide and it'll make it easier to get a straight line. It takes a couple of minutes to set up, but you get better results, you know what I mean. I hope you can see that, but I just marked out the hull roughly. I just traced it round the pipe. Now I thought I had a hull cutter big enough, but what I'll have to do is do it out with jigsaw again. It doesn't have to be super because this pipe's going to come out ultimately, almost immediately after I've cast it. So, but that's that, and I'll uh, cut it out and get back to you. So that's that cut out. It's not perfect, but it doesn't matter because the slump, the mix I'm going to be using. Is going to be very dry so it's not going to pour out and uh, now I'll get it put together as a box and don't mix so that's the box for the cast I'm just going to cut the pipe at uh, 45 and fit that in I'll show you that after but it's just really rough rough <laughs> shutter work but it'll do the job if I were pouring wet, really wet concrete I'd go nuts on reinforcement but because this is going to be quite dry and light then this should do the job well it will do the job but i've still got to pack it in quite hard around the pipes so it's got to be reasonably stable so i've cut the pipe now because it's quite a large diameter i had to cut it bound with axe up which wasn't actually too difficult marked it out at 45 put a center line on it with, with a, a string line so i could draw it draw me 45 on it and uh, cut it with an axe i had to do it from both sides it's not perfect but more than good enough so that's my dry mold sort of sorted you see how that goes together i'll just put these two bits of wood to help it support it but when it's packed in it should be okay i'm gonna start doing a mix of 10 liters it's a 10 liter bucket i'm guessing it's going to take a bit more than 10 liters i might not go all the way up to the top but uh, i'll make sure i've got a good yeah probably up probably up to sort of this height at least but we will see I'll show you the mix I'm going to do that downstairs in the cellar I don't want to fill it up and then have to drag it down <laughs> it's quite icy outside I might end up falling on my face and uh, <laughs> you know things like that happen I'll just explain mix um, this is what I'm using this is pre-mixed it's got sand it's got sand and cement in it and perlite now last time i did the when I did the the plant pot i used a 50 50 and i'm thinking about going a 60 40 on this one in fact that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go 60 40 I'm, i won't have enough just that i've got another bag and i've got another bag of this so i'll mix that up and then i'll show you a mix that I'll, that'll bring it to a nice dry slump so to say i hope you can see i've just uh, put a bit of water in this now i've had there's 10 litres of material here and I've probably put maybe just over a litre of water in so far. Now this is very dry as you can see look, but I'll just try and make sure it's all mixed up, but it could probably stand a bit more water. I want it to hold together like that and break pretty much like good soil, you know what I mean? Just probably needs a little bit more of a mix but that's not bad that's what I'm looking for I 
and I've literally just dripped water in it. Just make sure I've that bottom. Drizzled it in a few times, but as I said, there's not much more than a litre of water in that. I wish I'd have measured it, I should have measured it to be better, but it's, I sort of go, I'm going by eye and that's looking alright, you know what I mean? There's a bit dry at the bottom. I'll just give it a little bit more water, not a lot. And that's about that. So I'll fill mould. So I'll put pipe out and what I'm gonna do is fill it up. You can see right into the bottom. I'll fill it up to the bottom of the pipe and compact it with a stick, sort of thing. I'll just show you quick so I won't bore you with all that. So I had a bit of fiddling around getting it set up, make sure your pipe's twisted in the right direction and low enough. But bottom's in, I'm just going to finish filling it in and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. So guys, that's 10 litres in, so I think I'm going to mix another 10. And I'll show you the finished thing. Well, finished it so far, not cured. So guys, there we have it. I only managed to have another another five litres, but it's enough, so it's pretty good. Um, even as it is now, well, not as it is now, it's not dry, but as it is, when it's dry, it'd work as a standalone stove, so that's another thing. If it's, I mean, it's quite easy to make. I've probably spent three or four hours just putting it all together and finishing it up between videoing and eating, but you know what I mean? You've got a standalone stove there.